Hello, I'm going to talk about wave motion and vibrations. Here I have a, a two meter stick and I'm going to anchor it here at the end of the table and set it into vibration. And then lengthen it and do the same thing again. And we notice that it vibrates with a higher frequency when it's shorter and when it's longer it vibrates with a lower frequency. Let's talk a little bit about why that is. It turns out that what's really happening here is that a transverse wave is propagating along the stick when we strike it or set it into vibration by any process. A wave travels out and travels back in such a way that we have an antinode at the open end and a node at the fixed point. And the distance between an antinode and a node is a quarter of a wavelength. So if we increase that quarter wavelength, we're also increasing the wavelength. As we increase the wavelength, then the frequency decreases. So we have a low frequency for a long stick, and we have a higher frequency for a shorter stick. Now I can go to an even longer stick. I can take the entire two meter stick and let it vibrate back and forth in this fashion. And a wave goes out, comes back in such a way we have an anti-node at the, at the free end and a node where my hand is. And the distance between the anti-node and the node is a quarter wavelength. So this has a relatively low frequency of something like 1,001, 1,002, maybe one cycle per second. If I want to uh, increase the frequency, of course, I can shorten it up and it'll vibrate faster. Now, back to our original single, uh, our original uh, vibrating meter stick here. It uh, really consists of a standing wave situation where the wave goes back and forth in such a way that uh, it sets up a standing wave and uh, vibrates back and forth with a certain frequency. And there's an associated wavelength with that so that we have the distance between node and anti-node being a quarter of a wavelength, somewhat analogous to the vibrating string that we uh, have looked at earlier. Now, uh, let's talk about what we could do with the same length stick and the same speed of transverse wave propagating along the stick, but now let's go to a higher frequency and see if we can pick up another point of resonance. So here's one frequency where it resonates depending on the length of the stick and how fast the wave travels back and forth along the stick. That determines the particular frequency at which it vibrates. I go to a higher frequency and have it vibrate in this fashion. Now what's happening is a wave is traveling out, it's leaving my hand, going out, reflecting back from the open end down there and coming back in such a way that a wave that's positive and a wave that's negative traveling in opposite directions through the same medium cancel out at that point out there that uh, corresponds to a a node. So that point out there, a third of the way from the end of the stick approximately, is a nodal point. The end of the stick is an anti-node, and two-thirds from the end is an anti-node, and where my hand is approximately is a, a nodal point. So we have uh, another standing wave situation of a still higher frequency. Now let's go from there to a, uh, a tuning fork. A tuning fork uh, has prongs on it, and the prongs of this tuning fork behave like a vibrating stick. They, uh, the end moves back and forth, but what's really happening is waves are traveling up and back in such a way that each prong of the tuning fork uh, is essentially a standing wave. And uh, let's just look at one prong of the tuning fork at a time here and set that into vibration. So the tuning fork vibrates. And it moves back and forth. In the case of this particular tuning fork, it vibrates back 256 cycles per second. And each time it moves out, it sends out a longitudinal wave through the air that we call a sound wave. It sends a longitudinal wave out, moves back, sends another one back and forth. Each time it moves out, it sends a wave, goes back and sends another wave. And so those waves will have a certain spacing, certain frequency, and a certain wavelength. Now I'm talking about the longitudinal waves that the tuning fork sets up in the air, as opposed to the transverse waves that cause the vibrations to occur in the tuning fork. But the frequency of vibration of the tuning fork is going to be the same as the frequency of vibration of those longitudinal sound waves that go out into the air. Once again, let's listen to that sound. 256 vibrations per second. 
tuning fork prong vibrates 256 times per second. The sound we hear has a pitch corresponding to 256 cycles per second. If I go to a shorter length tuning fork, just like the shorter length stick, if the stick is shorter, vibrates faster, higher frequency. If the tuning fork is shorter, it'll vibrate more cycles per second. This actually vibrates twice as fast or with twice the frequency of the earlier one. This vibrates 512 times per second. So 512 times per second, this is sending out uh, longitudinal sound waves into the air as a result of the transverse waves of vibration along the tuning fork. So 512 cycles per second, I believe that's fairly close to middle C. 512 vibrations per second set up waves in the air uh, corresponding to sound of that particular pitch vibrational motion.